willingness. How willing are you to attract into your life what you want and to rid yourself of the excuses? The willingness means suspending all of your blame. It means taking total responsibility for everything that is in your life, including the memes that were handed to you by your well-meaning parents and their neighbors and, and so on. To say, I did it all. It also means surrendering. Willingness means, you know, in, in the recovery movement, and many of you know that uh, I have been without alcohol, for, alcohol now for 20 years plus, and just gave it up. And the reason that I gave it up, and the way, the reason I was able to do it, was through being willing to say, I surrender. I just let go. And what? Let God, right? And allow this divine... You see, if the ego was in charge of you, then why would you get old? I was sitting in an interview today with Kenny Blanchard, and he's turning 70 and I'm turning 69, and I said, you know, if the ego was really in charge, we wouldn't be sitting here in these 68-year-old bodies. <laughs> so we'd keep it about 23, wouldn't we? <laughs> because, you know, that's when we feel that we're the most powerful. And when we have, but there's something else that's in charge. And not just in charge of our bodies and its aging, but there's something you have to surrender to that's even bigger than all of us. And you have to be willing to do that, to know that everything that you came here to do is a part of that. Willingness means shedding all things that you're unwilling to do. I remember when uh, I did my very first PBS special back in 1999, and I went around the country and I visited PBS stations in every market. It made no difference to me how many people were there, whether it was a tiny little market or a very large market. Whatever they asked me to do, I said, I have nothing on my unwillingness uh, category. And I made over 170 station visits, very often paying my own expenses and uh, living on a very, very tight budget. But I knew that I wanted to take the messages that I'm speaking about here and that I spoke about in my earlier programs. And there was nothing I was unwilling to do. I did it when Erroneous Owns was published back in the 1976. Bought up the first two printings, went across the country, paid for my own expenses, 14-hour days doing interviews, whatever it might be, whatever it takes, just have that willingness. Virginia Woolf, <laughs> no one's afraid of her, right? <laughs> she had a wonderful line. She said, arrange whatever pieces come your way. Whatever it is that comes your way, no matter how tough it may be, whatever, arrange whatever pieces come your way and make it work for you. I'd like to speak for just a moment about passion as a principle for eliminating excuses. Create, the, create for yourself the habit of enthusiasm about everything. When I watched the, uh, the interview with uh, Filippi, uh, who was the guy who was the man on wire, he said, you have to have passion every single day. Just, and what does the word enthusiasm mean? Entheos, God, yasm, within, in Greek, the God within. That's the meaning of, when you have passion for anything inside of you, you are really, you're, that, that's God speaking to you. If you have total passion for something and you just won't let go of it, regardless of what the circumstances of your life are, you will find a way the universe will provide you with a way. The strange synchronistic experiences and serendipities that seem to show up, they show up much more frequently and right on time when you're living from a place of passion. No passion? Continue with your excuses. Passion is the creative source inside of you. Walk with it. I do it every day. Hold hands with it. Make it your number one relationship in life, not to, your, not to your spouse, not to your children, not even to yourself. Make your number one relationship to your source, to God, to that place from which you return, to which all things return. Live from a place of passion and you will be guided.